Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer tutorial. In today's tutorial, I wanna take a look at this project here. This is a basic enclosure for arcade buttons. So this is using an Adafruit feather, which you can see here, and four of these mini arcade buttons. These arcade buttons have 24 millimeter diameters. They have built-in LEDs. They're really fun, and we wanna make a project with these guys. So the main thing about this project was learning how to do a parametric box so that you can have uh, customized buttons. So you can say how many buttons you want in this design. So if we take a look at it without the components, you can see there are uh, three across and two down. These are circles inside of a regular button that's shelled out. We have a little hole for our USB ports and we have some standoffs for our actual feather board. So you can see all the components in there like that. They're a little bit tight here. You can see that we're intersecting and stuff, but that's okay because we can modify the button. We can cut them and trim them down just to kind of keep this design slim. But the main thing about this is to figure out how to make it so we can say exactly how many buttons we want to cross and how many buttons are down, all without having to re-extrude anything. So Here's a demo of what I put together, and you can see it's pretty much similar. I have the, the area for the feather, and I have a three across and two down. I also have these little nubs on the side. If you've seen any one of my enclosures, you'll know that these nubs allow the two pieces to snap fit together. So there's a little indentation on the lip here. We have an extrusion over here on the side wall so that it, uh, it has a nice spacing between them. And then on the case itself, it has this little triangular nub that protrudes out and these are all at a 45 degree angle so that they can print without any support materials so that's working out really well but here's the main demo that we want to look at let's go ahead and open our parameters so our user parameters so you can see we have a cross down and let's go ahead and modify let's play with these so let's say we want four across I'm going to hit tab and then instantly you can see we get a nice update I'm going to put four here as well so now we have a four by four box. I didn't have to do any re-extrusions. Everything is just working as I expected it to. Another thing we can change is the spacing between the buttons. So let's say we wanna make it a little bit more so we can say 43. You'll get some nice spacing between the buttons. Let's say we wanna change the diameter of our buttons to a more traditional 30 millimeter buttons. You can see the buttons get updated as well. If we take a close look at the feather area, you can see that it's actually, it's, it's being centered and it stays centered. So that's really nice. So I'm gonna change this to one. So now we're gonna get a one by four button. You can see here that there's enough clearance and everything for the feather still. And you'll notice that our nubs have elongated. So as we change the number of buttons, our nubs are dynamically changing as well, which is really powerful and really nice. So now I have this uh, one by two button box, which is kind of neat, and I love four by four. You can have fun and come up with a lot of different uh, customizations with this. So I think this is a really great way to make uh, any type of thing that needs to hold something. Uh, maybe you want to make a, a pencil holder, or an SD card holder, or something that's, uh, that's driven with a bunch of uh, repeating patterns. So. The real goal here was figuring out how to make uh, these cutouts be parametric. Uh, so I'm gonna show you that now. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a new design. And the main thing about this is we need to start uh, from the very center origin. So I'm gonna start by making a new component and I'm just gonna call this case. Now inside the component with it activated, I'm gonna make a circle. And I'm gonna draw it here, looking at the top view, I'm gonna click on the bottom kind of floor plane. Now, in starting from the very center of this grid, I'm gonna start and draw out my, uh, my, my diameter for the button cutout. So this is gonna be 24 millimeters, and I'll hit enter. But before I finish this out, I'm gonna open the change parameters, and I'm gonna start adding my parameters. So the first thing is the diameter of the button and this is gonna be 24 millimeters. Let's go ahead and add the height of our, of our enclosure, which will be 33.5. It can be whatever we want after the fact, but I'm just making it that number. The next thing I'll do is a cross, and it's important to hit unit and say no units, because this is just a regular number. So I'm gonna start off with two, 
and then I'll add another one. This one will be down. Again, change the unit from millimeters to just no units, and then put two. Uh, the next thing will be the spacing between the buttons, so I'll just call it spacing, and I think it 34 millimeters is a good one. And we'll leave the unit at millimeters, but we can change it if we want later. So now we have our diameter, our height, across, down, and spacing, and that's really all we need uh, to get this to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, modify that 24 value and change it to just diameter. So now I can parametrically change that whenever I need. I'll hit stop sketch. The next thing I'll do is I'll click on that circle profile, hit E on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna type in height for the, uh, the actual uh, extrusion distance. So now I hit okay, and now I have our first body, which is gonna be our cutout. The next thing I'm gonna do is I make another sketch, and this one is gonna be our box itself. So I'm gonna hide body one for a second and then click on the floor plane again, looking from the top. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a rectangle, and the rectangle is gonna go around this area here, around the center. So I'm gonna click somewhere over here, drag out a square, and I'm just gonna click right there. I don't have any parameters set, uh, any any dimension set, but we do have some degrees of freedom. So I can click this around. You can see the box is kind of moving around like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a dimension from this edge here. So I'm going to click on that edge, hit D on my keyboard, and then I'm going to click on that center dot here that's in the center of our grid. Pull that out, and then I'm going to type in padding. So padding is or actually rather spacing, that's what we call this. So I'm gonna put spacing, but instead of just spacing, I'm actually gonna divide that by two. So I can do that by saying spacing slash two, and that's basically saying divide that number, which is actually 20, uh, 17 out of, the, out of the 34 that we put. So I'm gonna do the same thing now, but for this top edge over here. So that top edge using the dimension tool and then click on that center line or the center dot there. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So pa or spacing divided by two, and I'll hit enter. So now we can see that we have some dimensions applied here. So this will always be a certain distance away from that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually apply another sketch dimension, but this time to this bottom guy over here. So I'm gonna click on that, select it, and then hit D on my keyboard. I'm gonna to click to modify it, and then I'm gonna say space or yeah spacing and then times across so we get basically the spacing multiplied by the amount of across in this case it's just two so it's spacing times two which is 68 and then we're going to do one over here but we're, this time we're going to say um, spacing multiplied by down so whatever number we have for down, it'll multiply it for down. So now we have a button, a box at 68 by 68, and I'll hit stop sketch. Next thing I'm gonna do is extrude this out, and for the distance, I'm just gonna type in height, and then hit enter. At this point, we can start uh, adding our offset. That's one thing I forgot to add here, is offset. What offset's gonna let us do is just create a little bit more area uh, from the edge of the box to the button. So I'm just gonna put seven for now, and I'll hit okay. And I'm gonna apply that by uh, using the press and pull, or yeah, press and pull, which is uh, the hotkey is Q, so I can hit Q, and then select all four sides of my box, and then I'm gonna, for the, uh, for the distance, I'm gonna type in offset, and hit enter on that. So now I have an offset. So I'm gonna bring back uh, body one, which is our, our first circle that we made, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, well, first of all, let's make this box a little bit more into a box. So I'm gonna add some fillets to all four corners here, maybe something like six. And then I'll go ahead and, and why not shell out the bottom here with a, with a 1.5 millimeter thickness. So now I have this more of a box looking thing. You can kind of see the, the stuff inside there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine these two together. So for my target body, it's gonna be the box, and for my tools body, is gonna be the circle. And automatically, it changed the operation to a cut, which is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna hit okay. So now we have our first cutout. The next thing we're gonna do, and this is where like the real magic happens, 
we're gonna apply a pattern to this surface here. So we can actually apply patterns, uh, features, we can apply patterns to features. I would call this a feature here. So with that selected, I'm gonna bring up my modeling toolbox and then just type in pattern, P-A-T-T, -T, and then you'll see uh, we have three different patterns to choose from. I'm gonna click on rectangular. So automatically the pattern type is set to faces because this is indeed a face and the object is already selected. I'm gonna click on directions and this is gonna bring up uh, the origins and say, well, where do you want this to go? What direction? So I'm gonna click on this red line, which is the X axis. And then I can click on these arrows to kind of bring out the pattern. So you can see there's way too many there. The distance type should be on spacing because that's the amount of, uh, that's the distance types I want for these guys. The next thing is the first quantity box. I want this to be the across number. So I'm just gonna type in across. And then for the distance, I'm gonna type in spacing, which is our user parameter. And then for, for the next set of quantity, I'm gonna put down. But for the distance, I'm gonna use spacing again. So like that. So now you can see, you get a little preview here, kind of, it's ghosted out. And I'm gonna hit okay. Everything else is set up for me here. And now with that, I basically have my box. So with those parameters all set in place, I can now go ahead and modify uh, the, the amount of buttons that I want. So let's say I want four across and maybe I want three down. So with that, we, we have this super flexible, customizable box. So that's basically the main kind of uh, way to set this up. From this point, we can add all sorts of features. So like those nubs, we can, we can create our, um, our cover by clicking on this and driving it from that. So really, I just wanted to show you guys the magic of um, patterning features and faces instead of uh, patterning components and re-extrusions. So before, the reason what held me up from doing this was kind of making a pattern within the sketch. So what I, so what I would do is I would uh, grab this circle and then try to do the pattern all within the sketch and then extrude it to make these cuts. The thing that makes this work is that we're extruding the cut first and then we're applying the pattern. And that's really what allows us to make something like this. Um, as, as you start um, piling uh, new features on top of, uh, on top of existing surfaces, everything just kind of updates. I have a couple other tutorials on parametric designs, and this is my first attempt at coming up with something that, allow, that has these pre-cuts already made for you. So I think that's a really cool way to get this going. If you guys have any tips or any ideas, or if you found this useful, let me know in the comments. I'd love to read all your comments about it, and I hope this helps you guys in your future projects. I'll see you guys in the next one.